about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker is Julia Weintraub. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, I brought you all the new edition of the Cannabis Digest. It also has the um, interview that the mayor did with Ted Smith. Um, so I brought this here for you, which thank you. Um, so I came to talk to you all today, um, and I would like to thank you for hearing me. Um, just basically, to give you some insight into the lives of a medical patient um, and how the regulations right now are currently affecting us. And the only way that I can really do that in an authentic way is from the heart and telling you about myself. Um, so I personally, I uh, started my health journey with cervical cancer. I've had a total of six operations, three of them laparoscopically, was prescribed a large amount of opiates, all from my doctor. I've never taken a recreational opiate whatsoever. Um, but like many people, one thing I have never really mentioned to the council was I was a two-year member of the Pandora Methadone Clinic. So like many people who are put on opiates and who don't know when their health problems are going to end, um, you are just not living a normal life. You don't feel normal. You feel very sick all the time. And a lot of young women, um, I was in a long-term relationship, a lot of young women are being put on to methadone as a pain reliever because it doesn't pass on to a baby, or so we're told, if there's a possibility of you getting pregnant. So it's actually to the extreme where um, doctors are often prescribing this in the maternity ward as a pain reliever for women so they can be more coherent during labor process. Um, so after several years of being on this and two years over at Pandora, um, I decided it was, I was done with it and I had to do the slow taper, the detox, um, agonizing detox after six and a half years of every day of taking this and go through years of post-acute withdrawal. I have almost three years of being off of all opiates and the way that I did this entirely was cannabis edibles. Um, and I'm telling you, after six and a half years of taking this every single day, I had no nausea. I didn't throw up one time. And that medically shouldn't happen, but there is a major reason for this. Um, we do know that while there are a large amount of opiate receptors uh, all over your body, the ones that a lot of the time target pain, your MOA receptors specifically, are in your digestive tract. Um, so, which is the reason why a lot of people who take opiates get very nauseous, they get sick, they have all sorts of issues. And specifically when you take a cannabis edible, as well as it absorbing into your bloodstream and providing medicine that way, it, uh, there's been research that has been showing that it tends to almost create a topical effect on those receptors in the body. Um, and speaking from personal experience, that's something that I can say really, really does work. Um, you know, I'd like to remind you that for any statistics to actually be backed by Health Canada, there does need to be long-term human testing, so we're talking 10 to 15 years. And we are just, not, like those kind of studies are just starting to happen now. Um, now, being one of these patients, my doctor does not ever want to put his license on the line, and he has never signed a legal prescription in any circumstance. He never will. Um, he's told me very firmly, even in an end-of-life situation, he's just not comfortable. And personally, I don't blame him. After all of the school that he went through, after all of the work and study, he should not have to put his career on the line to give me that license. Um, my roommate is a naval engineering student, so he, I cannot smoke anything in my house. I cannot make edibles. It would be risking his career, and again, with this housing, housing crisis going on, I'm not going to risk my place. Um, I actually live at 3360 Vision Way, which is out in Happy Valley Road, and I work downtown. So the problems that I'm having with these regulations um, are you know, the threat that some of these places are under for on-site consumption. Um, I'm, I'm a female that, I mean, I've got an operation coming up in a couple of months where I'm going to have a major organ removed, and I have to do the entire surgery without any form of an opiate because of the way my system is. And if I have to, post-surgery, go to 
somewhere out in the public that's tucked away, light something that smells very strongly, that is going to make me a target. And I might not be able to run. I might not be able to fight as well as somebody normally. I can't smoke in my house. If I wanted to, I would have to drive all the way out to Happy Valley Road. And I am just one of so many people that slip through these cracks. And I mean, the way the federal government, the way these ACMPR regulations are going, I, the, they want it to be your attending physician. And there's nothing I can do. Ms. Weintraub, thank you very much. No Thank Thanks you. Thanks for sharing your story. Uh, next speaker, please, is Roy Fletcher.